Welcome to the Lecturio podcast. We understand that medical or nursing school can be challenging, but you don't have to go through it alone. Our goal is to bring you key medical and nursing topics in easy to digest, bite-sized episodes so you can keep learning on the go. In today's episode, we'll be diving into electrocardiograms, or ECGs. Welcome to Health Talk, where we break down medical concepts into plain conversations. Today, we're diving into a topic that's foundational to healthcare, the electrocardiogram, often referred to as an ECG. Whether you've seen those squiggly lines on a monitor before, or this is brand new to you, you're in for an insightful conversation. That's right. Those squiggly lines are actually incredibly powerful. ECGs give doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals important information about the heart's electrical activity. For example, an ECG can alert us to rhythm disorders, inflamed heart muscles, or even signs of a heart attack before it fully happens. It's a diagnostic tool that's pretty straightforward to do, but can potentially save lives. Absolutely. To break it down for everyone, an electrocardiogram, or ECG, is essentially a graphic representation of your heart's electrical activity over time. It tracks how the heart pumps and moves blood by recording the electrical signals that make your heart contract. Exactly. Your heart is basically one big electrical system, even though we don't often think of it that way in our daily lives. Every heartbeat is powered by tiny electrical impulses, and the ECG captures them in a visual format. What's amazing is that this test has been around for quite some time. It was invented in 1902 by a Dutch doctor named Willem Einthoven, who actually won the Nobel Prize for it. Wow, a Nobel Prize for an ECG. Just imagine how revolutionary that was. The simplicity in the procedure is part of its brilliance. It's a non-invasive test. No surgery, no pain. All that's needed is a few small sticky pads or electrodes placed on specific areas of the body. That's right. The electrodes are affixed to the skin, and they pick up those uh, electrical signals. And from those signals, we get a detailed three-dimensional look at what's happening inside the heart. It's incredible how much power these little stickers essentially hold. Now, it's called a 12-lead ECG, even though only 10 electrodes are used. The reason for that? Each electrode provides multiple views, or leads, of the heart. So even though you only stick 10 electrodes onto the patient, you get 12 different angles of the heart's activity. That's right. Four of the electrodes usually go on the limbs, one near each wrist and around the ankles or chest area, depending on the clinical setting. The other six electrodes are placed strategically across the patient's chest. These pick up signals from different parts of the heart. Right, and that exact placement is key. You've got V1 through V6, starting just to the right of the sternum with V1, moving left across the chest until you reach V6. Each one gives us a unique perspective of how the electrical signals are traveling through the heart. And let's talk a little about these leads for a moment. The first ones, lead 1, lead 2, and lead 3, are based on signals picked up between pairs of electrodes in the arms and legs, often called the limb leads. These draw a kind of triangle, called the Einthoven triangle, which gives us basic insight into heart function. I like to explain it as a way of capturing signals from different points of view. It's like taking pictures or x-rays from different angles. Each lead shows the heart's activity from another perspective. And beyond the limb leads, we have augmented leads. These are AVR, which looks from the right arm, AVL from the left arm, and AVF from the left leg. Each of these clues us in from yet another angle, ensuring nothing goes unseen. It's like building a complete puzzle. Each little electrode brings its own piece to the table, and when they're all combined, we get that comprehensive 3D picture of the heart's activity. And speaking of puzzles, what really gets interesting is when those signals show up on paper. That's where we get that squiggly line ECG tracing. The ECG is organized as a graph, with time on the x-axis and voltage, or electrical strength, on the y-axis. This allows us to see how fast the heart is beating and if those beats are happening in a regular rhythm. And that's what medical professionals are examining when they study an ECG tracing, whether the heart's beating too fast, too slow, or irregularly. We can measure the spacing between those peaks, called the RR interval. For example, calculating the heart rate is as simple as dividing 300 
by the number of large boxes between the QRS complexes on the grid, where large boxes span 0.2 seconds each. Exactly. So you might hear medical terms like bradycardia, meaning a slow heart rate when too many squares separate those peaks, or tachycardia, meaning a fast heart rate when there are fewer squares in between. Okay, let's go a bit deeper into what those squiggly lines represent. The ECG tracing is divided into several key components, each reflecting an important electrical or mechanical event in the heart. First up is the P wave. This little bump represents atrial depolarization, which is essentially the upper chambers of the heart, or atria, contracting. Right, the electrical impulse begins in the atria, then moves to the ventricles. That's when we see the QRS complex, a series of peaks and valleys that mark the ventricular depolarization, or the heart's main pumping chambers contracting to push blood throughout the body. And finally, we have the T wave, which represents repolarization. Basically, it's the heart resetting or recharging after it beats, so it's ready for the next contraction. Together, the P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave show us what's happening during a full heartbeat. Each of those sections, the waveforms, gives us insight into whether the heart's functioning properly. The intervals between these waves, like the PR interval or the QT interval, tell us how long it's taking for the electrical impulse to travel through the heart. Too short, too long, or irregular timings could signal an issue. One of the most important intervals we monitor is the ST segment. That's the flat isoelectric line that shows what's happening between the end of the QRS complex and the beginning of the T wave. When this segment is elevated or depressed, it could indicate important conditions like ischemia, when the heart's not getting enough blood, or even a heart attack. And that's why the ECG is so important. Those subtle changes in the waveforms and segments tell us a lot about heart health. For example, nursing students are often taught to recognize abnormalities in the ST segment or the T wave, which could signal life-threatening conditions like myocardial infarction, commonly known as a heart attack. This is exactly why ECGs are often used in emergency settings or as part of routine health checks. Sometimes patients don't even feel any symptoms, but their ECG can reveal something as serious as an arrhythmia or early signs of heart disease. Catching this early could make the difference between a treatable condition and a medical emergency. And for all you nursing professionals listening out there, understanding how to perform a precise ECG and interpret the basics can be key to the diagnostics that could eventually save lives. Remember, perfect electrode placement is vital. An electrode even an inch off its mark could change the reading, giving you faulty information. Exactly. It's like misplacing a camera at the wrong angle. It changes the view and can lead to false conclusions on what's really happening with the heart. It really is an art and a science combined. What's brilliant is how effective the ECG is with such minimal effort. It's a quick test, but it shows so much information at a glance, whether it's being used as part of a health screening or in the middle of a hectic emergency room. Agreed. And many modern ECGs have software built into the system to help clinicians quickly analyze the results, even offering automated measurements and interval calculations. It's become faster, smarter, and more efficient. The beauty of this kind of technology is that it can flag potential issues before they start causing noticeable symptoms. A patient could have an abnormal heart rhythm, for instance, and might not feel a thing, but the ECG would help detect it early enough for intervention. Exactly, and that's why ECGs are a powerful tool in preventing worse outcomes down the line. It's a quick snapshot, but one that can carry a whole lot of weight in diagnosis and treatment decisions. To sum it all up, we've covered a lot of ground today about how the ECG works, the different waveforms, electrode placement, and why it all matters. Whether you're a healthcare worker or just someone curious about how heart health is monitored, these little waveforms tell a story very few other diagnostic tools can. So for the listeners out there, remember, it's not about becoming an expert in reading ECGs, but understanding that this simple test can reveal so much. It acts as an early warning system for your heart, and every little wave and spike is a sign telling the heart's story. Exactly. And the more we understand how to interpret those signs, the better prepared we are to take action when it counts. 
Thanks for sticking with us on this journey through the heart's electrical system. Thanks for joining us on Health Talk. Until next time, take care of your hearts and listen to your body.